Hello, everyone. Welcome to Developing Palettes. I am Aaron Loomis coming to you from the Drew Estate Studio. With me today is Seth Geis and from the Villager Scar Studios, John McTavish. How you guys doing? Doing well. We're going to go past ludicrous speed for this review all the way to plaid. <laughs> and you'll understand what that reference means shortly. That's right. John, will you, I mean, Aaron, put a photo of this this stick. It's right. so sexy. Let's see. Here we go. It's a good looking cigar. It is a good looking cigar. There you go. It's a really good band. And I'll tell you one thing. This looks better in a Toro than when they did it in the other stuff. But, you know, I was going to I'm going to save that for my. But yes, it really does. All right. So today we are talking about the La Flor Dominicana and Illusion Bull. Jack Schwartz importer, 100 years. Uh, cigar is a Toro Extra, six and a quarter by 54. Comes out of the tobacco letter of La Flor factory in the Dominican Republic. Uh, rappers Ecuadorian Corojo, binder and filler, both from the Dominican Republic. Uh, price point is $20. Uh, cigars released in September of 2021. Uh, and we were sent these cigars by the cigar hound dog himself, Matt oh, Masters. Wow. Yes. Uh, thank you, cigar hound dog. First of all, woof, wow. Woof. That's, uh, yeah, woof woof. Uh, second of all, man, that's, um, you know, if you're on a, like, you can, you can keep it below $12. It's not going to offend us. Like, like it's, it's, it's a few bucks, but thank you. Yeah, so uh, go check out his YouTube channel. If you like what you see, be sure to subscribe. Uh, I'm sure he'd appreciate it, and we'd appreciate it. Um, okay. All right, so with all that out of the way, Seth, take us through your experience with this Andalusian Bull, Jack Schwartz yeah. Importers, 100 years. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's a title, man. It's a title. Listen, it's the first third just immediately was different than what I got with a lot of LaFleur's. Um, it's really balanced. I was getting some herbal leather qualities. There's hay and tobacco, nutty. There's sweet cinnamon spice, um, medium in strength of body. Just was really just kind of caught me by surprise, and I was really digging it. Um, second, third was showing a little bit more leather, um, still showing that earth, herb, and spice quality, still medium in strength and body. Um, and the final third just added a little bit of cocoa, add some coffee, kept that medium strength, but it just had a really nice, really nice finish. It just kept solid all the way to the end. Um, the burn was decent. I would say, you know, I give it a good for LaFleur. I'd say it's probably very good. Um, <laughs> so, um, and, you know, the draw was really good as well. So, yeah, John. Uh, I agree with Seth. Um, this one caught me off guard and the natural comparison, of course, is to the original Andalusian bowl, which I have in my humidor. And I, I don't think this smokes anything like the original Andalusian bowl. So I'm going to have to light up one of those this weekend. But I was like, what is this cigar? Uh, open with mild, dry wood, uh, creaminess, light baking spices, earthy clove. I'm like, this is so subdued and so restrained, um, you know, citrus sourness, um, mustiness just you know and bread it was just like i was just like this is such a, an interesting profile from what they normally do uh so i was i was definitely engaged and then fortunately it kept it up to the second third so bread baking spices um more wood uh a little bit of earthiness like just all goodness and then last third uh kind of bread kind of wood um a little bit of tannins a little bit of graham cracker not at the same level of complexity, but you know, I had a great smoking experience. Um, fortunately for me, the burn was perfect. The, although it did seem like it, you know, when you're smoking and like, you can feel the cigar trying to stall and you're like, don't you stall on me. I'll, don't you dare I'll, stall I'll give on you me. A good explanation of that when I get to my, <laughs> oh, cool. um, so it, it, it seemed like it wanted to stall at one point and then it just seemed to continue fine from there. Uh, draws perfect. So yeah, I was like, I was, very happy to smoke the cigar, especially because it broke up a list of cigars that were not so good. Uh, so, yeah. Aaron? Yeah, for me, the cigar started with cedar and creamy but bold baking spice. Got some black pepper that joined in fairly quickly, and then the baking spice departed a little bit later. Uh, some mustiness joined in towards the end of the first third, and then the second third saw a toast note join. Uh, some cedar, I mean, sorry, some dry earth joined in, and then the black pepper departed. And then the final third saw some creaminess rejoin, and then a vegetal note appeared. Um so kind of getting on what John was talking about, um, for me, the burn seemed a bit of an issue is it, I didn't get normal sm smoke production for most of the cigar. And I had to take multiple draws uh, a majority of the time trying to get enough smoke to you know be able to get flavor and all that kind of stuff. So I don't, I think that 
completely probably destroyed the flavor profile that I was supposed to get out of the cigar just because of the combustion issues that the cigar was having. So I'm going to be a one off on this. And I, I don't think what my I don't think my experience is going to be what you would typically experience from this, as you'll find out from Seth and John. But, um, you know, it had some sneaky strength as it went along. Uh, that could have just been me having to puff on it uh, frequently because by the time I was I was sweating. So I don't know if that was just me being exhausted from all the draws or I you know, haven't had to do that in a while or uh, if it was the nicotine that was kind of getting to me. But um, it was just uh, frustrating. Um, you know, to me, it was I, I was more focused on the draw, and, you know, than anything else. Um, the flavor wasn't jumping out at me saying, oh, this is really good. Uh, I wish we could just dodge this pesky draw. But yeah, it was, I was more focused on that. So it was just uh, it just wasn't a good time. But you guys obviously had a great experience. I'd love to try this again and kind of see if uh, I can get uh, what you guys had. All right, so starting with the score, Seth and John gave it the same score, 6.82. I gave it a 5.2. Um, so, Seth, 6.82. Yeah, listen, I thought it was just really enjoyable. Um, if I had another one, I probably would have smoked it right afterwards. It's, man, why don't they just release the Toros of these? I think <laughs> I think after I smoked it, I was like, Coop, have you smoked this? And he's like, yeah. I was like, why don't they just release the Toro? And he's like, I said the same thing. It's just, <laughs> it was really good. It just was really enjoyable, John. Yeah, it's so I got two hours and 48 minutes smoking time. And a lot of times when you do two, like over two and a half hours in a review, um, by the time I'm, I'm just exhausted because I'm like this, you know, it's tough to get through sometimes. Uh, but man, after like Seth was saying, after two hours and 40, 48 minutes, I was like, I kind of wish I had a second one because I was just really happy the entire time. And obviously the score reflects that like, this is a pretty serious standout from the normal scores we've been handing out this year. So uh, yeah. Uh, good. Really good cigar. Aaron. Yeah. My five point two matches up. Well, I mean, my experience was average flavor profile throughout uh, just really bad burn um, that just really submarine the score on this one. So, you know, throw my score out, go with the other two guys. If you, I don't know. I don't know that these even exist anymore. I don't know mm-hmm. if Jack Schwartz has sold out of these um, or if they still have any, but if they have them, I would say go check them out. If they have them, buy, them all. buy what you can. Buy so, all. Um, yeah. Uh, final thoughts from you guys on this one. Yeah, clearly they need to uh, release this in a larger engage because, like I said, this the original Andalusian Bull, from what I recall, and I'm going to smoke one probably this week because it's hot again, uh, it doesn't smoke anything like this. Like they're good, but they're not like, they're not this good. If cigar aficionado was like, yeah, we gave this top, top cigar of the year. I'd be like, Oh, that makes sense because it's yeah. really good. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it, it really, it's, I just keep going back to like, man, after like, you would have thought before blending the figurados that they did that maybe they smoked it. I don't know. I just kind of think it was like, please don't tell me that this was passed up. And then they're like, Hey, maybe we should release it again. I don't know how you couldn't have not smoked this. And then when they went for the Figurado, you're like, yeah, Yeah, this this one's better. This one's a lot better. It's, I know that they always have back order issues on on the, they should have. Nice to be in demand. If if you could release the Toros, I would do it. It, That's the one thing I could say. I'd say to them, if you could release these nationally, even if you did it, like once a year, do it. Oh, yeah. don't give me any ideas. Wait, no, do give them ideas. Take yes. the ideas. <laughs> Take the ideas. All right. Wherever you're catching this video, be sure to like and subscribe. Uh, you can read the full written review on the website, developingpalace.com. Follow us on all the social media channels, and you can catch all of our re- review recaps on podcasts, so iTunes, Google Play, and Podbean. Thank you for tuning in. We'll catch you on the next one. <laughs> <laughs>